these mollusks are pretty freaky. But how are they dangerous? Go for it. Wake it on, man. Oh, <laughs> God. That looks to me to be like a blue ringed octopus, one of the most highly venomous animals in the world and one of the ones that we do not have an anti-venom for. <laughs> that is such a stupid thing to do. That is such a stupid, stupid thing to do. Now, a bit of octopus anatomy for you, right? They've got a little beak and it's right in the middle of their body underneath and that's the bit that they inject venom with so it needs to actually drop down onto its prey to be able to kill it. So these guys are literally playing Russian roulette. How they create that venom is actually in their salivary glands. They've got a little bacteria in them and it creates tetrodotoxin. That is an incredibly strong chemical that is a neurotoxin. So the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to start to feel like your arms and legs are a bit numb or tingly. Your speech will become impaired. You might vomit. Then you'll become paralysed and won't be able to move. You'll still be fully conscious, but you'll likely die from lack of oxygen. It's not a pleasant process to go through. And if you do see a blue ringed octopus, take a photo and don't touch it. Look at his spots. Whoa! So this is a day octopus, right? And they're soft bodied. It means that they're really very vulnerable to attack. So they use camouflage. They can change their colours using chromatophores and they can also change the texture using these little lumps that they can sort of bring up and it means that see how the bottom of the ocean in this part is sort of lumpy and algae? It can make itself look like it's got the lumps. Look at that! That is so cool! I do believe that this octopus has probably been disturbed by this diver and that's why it's doing such visualisation. And that's a great view of the texture that it can change, make itself look like it's a completely different object. What a performance. It's gonna be cool, you see that slot? No way, you can't get to You are wrong, my friend. You're no. Now, octopuses can be very small or very large. But the important thing is, they don't feel restricted by their size. He can go through anything that his, uh, that his beak will fit through. A giant Pacific octopus is giant. It's the biggest octopus that there is. A lot of them grow to about five metres, which is sort of terrifying. You watch, he's going to go right through there. Look at him. Octopuses aren't shapeshifters, they're invertebrates, and that means they don't have an internal skeleton. They've got that little bony beak, just, and uh, they've got a bit of cartilage that protects their brain, but apart from that, it's malleable. That means that they can fit through tiny holes, they can spread out wide like a parachute, and they can do all sorts of things. It's frankly, I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> the octopus brain is different than the human brain. They have what's called decentralised intelligence. It means that there's a core of brain, it's like a donut, it's in the bell part of their body, <laughs> all the way out their arms. They have neurons, which is sort of crazy to think about, and it means that if an arm gets chopped off, it'll actually continue to do the action that it was meant to be doing, even though it's disembodied from the main part of the octopus's intelligence. There's his nose, he's just all the way through it now. Except for, oh, just back off. Watch. Yeah. Oh dear. You're not going to get it off either. Because if you remove one arm, it's got like seven other arms. There are documented cases of octopus attack. But the thing is, almost all of them have a backstory, right? Where the octopus was provoked in some way. Divers who regularly dive say that one of the most important things to do is to protect your air source. It must be like trying to fight angry jelly. If it wanted to, it could potentially really injure this bloke. Is he saying take a photo? 
Hello, I'm here from the future to warn you that the next clip made me make an eek face. It's a bit disturbing, so keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. Look at those suckers. I think I remember seeing this at the time. It's filmed overseas, and I think that this girl was making a series about eating live seafood, which is common in some cultures around the world. But in the case of octopuses, it's probably not a good idea. Look at it pulling her eye. So what is amazing about seeing this octopus attack this vlogger's face is that you can actually see how nimble each individual sucker is. They can really actually rotate and move. They're incredibly strong and you can get octohickeys from them. So I wouldn't be surprised if the day after she was actually bruised, <laughs> she did get a cut. Quite frankly, she got off lightly. <laughs> It's also really dangerous to eat uh, octopus arms that are freshly taken from the octopus because they've got that decentralised uh, nervous system. It means that they keep wriggling for quite some time, sometimes in excess of 15 minutes. And there have been cases of people eating fresh octopus arms and actually choking because as they go down, the suckers suck on to the inside of their throat. So let that be a lesson. <laughs> Most octopuses are actually really shy and retiring. They like to hide away and avoid confrontation. So to avoid getting an octopus hug from eight very strong neuron-filled sucker-lined arms, the best thing to do is give them space, space that they can go about their octopusy business and we can admire them from afar because there's so much to admire. Thanks for watching and if you like this video, why don't you click around because on ABC Science we've got heaps of videos that are just like this. In fact, we upload them every single week. So it's worth hitting subscribe and I'll see you here next time.